Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and today I'm taking up the subject, We Are Part God and Part Dust. The inside of us has been recreated in the image of God Himself, but the dusty part on the outside is still our natural body that's yet to be redeemed. We're going to talk about having victory over the flesh, over the problems of life, by not trusting in ourselves, but trusting in the living God on the inside of us. Let's go to the Word of God together. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello again and welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Today I'll be talking about that we are part dust and we are part God. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? It's our spirit versus our flesh. That's what I'm offering on the broadcast is this CD series on the flesh and the spirit and pointing out the strength that we have in each one. One is human strength. One is given over to us by the fall of Adam, but the other one is divine strength. And to be honest, on the front of the cover, they show an arm wrestling match going on. And that kind of is what happened, but it's not which one is stronger. It's which one you choose. Then, but you are to choose to walk in the spirit or choose to walk in the flesh. So even if the flesh is greatly weaker than the spirit, which it is, it's all your choice. If you think, nope, nope, I'm going to follow my flesh and I'm just going to commit that sin and I'm going to go after it and I'm going to have fun while I'm doing it. I mean, the spirit is strong, but it can't make you. God's on one side saying, choose me. And the flesh is on the other side saying, choose me. And so we're going to talk about today because we are part dust and we are part God. Genesis chapter five is where I want to begin with. And while you're turning to that verse of scripture, let me welcome all the new people that are here and glad you're joining with us. And I'll also welcome those who've been coming for a while and watching the broadcast every day. And I do have a little praise report from Seol. It's not really a praise report, it's just a comment on the broadcast. You make everything plain and simple so that everyone can understand it. Thank you, Ciola, for saying that. And I'm glad that that's how you see the broadcast because that's exactly what I like to do. I like to take complicated things and make them simple. If I don't understand it, I won't teach it. And I figure if I can understand it, anybody can understand it. I was not one of those brainy students and straight A's and, you know, took complicated classes. I sweated through high school and had lots of C's and B's and a couple of D's here and there, but they let me squeak through, went to college. Same thing happened there until my third year in college. Oklahoma State University. University, a junior there, the Lord spoke to me and told me I would be a teacher, which one day ended up being also a pastor. But when God called me, I found my calling and I was so happy. And when I went to Bible school, I aced everything because I found what I was called to do. And so I loved it when our teachers and our, our you know, the, the ones that ran the school would make it so simple, anybody could understand it. And that's always been my my goal. When I was growing up, I used to talk to people, you know, on the way out the door, especially my friends, we'd all walk out the door and say, do you understand what he said? No, no, it was so deep. What they meant by that was that we didn't understand squat what the guy said. And so uh, again, we want to make it simple. And that's what this broadcast is all about, taking the complicated things of the word of God, seemingly complicated, and finding out just how simple they are. Let's talk about when God created Adam and Eve, put them in the garden. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter five, verses one through three. This is the time when God created Adam and Eve and made Adam and Eve and put them in the garden. So let's take a look at it because this is really our heritage. We go back to Adam and Eve. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the light of God. He created male and female and blessed them and called their name Adam. Adam means mankind or just man by itself, but Adam called their name Adam in the day they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called him Seth. Notice that man and woman, Adam and Eve, were created in God's image and made in God's likeness. And then after the fall, Adam and Eve had a son named Seth, and he was in Adam's likeness and Adam's image. So once Adam fell, then all the children born after him have fallen too, and born in a fallen condition, that is us. So we come into this earth spiritually dead, and we come into this earth with the nature of the flesh in our body. And again, when we when Adam was placed here, he was made in God's image. That's his spirit. Your spirit is the exact image of God when it comes to life, whenever you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But your body is made in God's likeness. In other words, uh, our, my, my body looks a little like your body because we have both have ears and eyes and things like that. In other words, we have the kind of things that just normally indicate that we're a human being, but we also have marked differences. So we are we are uh, in each other's likeness, but I don't look like you and you don't look like me. People can recognize you and recognize me, even though we both have ears and eyes and hands and legs and feet. 
So again, this is the way it is with God. God has hands and, and feet and, and hair and, and things like that because the Bible tells us he does. But again, God, we don't know exactly what good looks like. We are made in God's likeness in our body, but we are made, uh, created in God's image. And then that fell. And so the first thing that happens when we're born again is our spirit receives life. And now we are in God's image again. Romans chapter eight and verse nine says, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So being born again, we now have the spirit of Christ living on the inside of us. We come to life. And just as Adam was alive before the fall, we now have spiritual life inside of us and we're waiting for the redemption of our body. So in the meantime, when you are born again, you are part God on the inside, but you're part dust on the outside. Both were cursed when Adam sinned, but God has reversed the curse in the spirit the Holy Spirit's come to live inside of you. Jesus Christ lives inside of you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, but yet your body has yet to be redeemed. So it's still called dust. And by that, I mean, there's the uh, curse that came into this earth, went into the dust of the ground. The first thing that happened was the curse started spreading through the dust. Everything made of dust was cursed. So that's why there was thorns and thistles. That's why animals created from the dust. They received a curse and animals turned on each other. But man also received the curse in that in your human body is the nature of the flesh. The nature of the flesh exists in your body. That's why it's called the body of sin. That's why it's called sin that works in your members. And this is found in Romans chapter seven, Romans chapter six. It's found in uh, James chapter two. In these chapters, it talks about that it's sin that works in our members. So again, that's why our body is just considered to be dust and carries a curse. One day we will have a, bo a body, a resurrection body, that doesn't come from dust. It actually comes from our recreated spirit. It says it's sown a natural body, but raised a spiritual body so that your spirit literally would take on uh, a, a body on the outside that could be touched and felt, but it will not be a human natural body from the dust of the ground. It will be from the eternal part of you, which is your spirit, so that your body will be eternal at that time. And that's whenever Jesus comes back for his church and we are transformed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, and this mortal puts on immortality, this corruptible puts on incorruption. And so again, Adam's spirit was created in God's image, but Adam's body was made in God's likeness. And Jesus told the woman at the well that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the doctrine of spirit is taught in the resurrection of Jesus in that when he was resurrected, he received a resurrection body. Even though on this earth, he had a body that was not corruptible, it was not a resurrection body. The body he received after he was resurrected from the dead had no blood in it. He said, here, touch me, handle me for a spirit has not flesh and bone as you see me have. So he still had flesh, but it was a different type of flesh, bones on the inside, but he had no blood in him because the blood is the life of the human body. But the, the life of the resurrection body is the Holy Spirit. So we will have no need of blood in that body one day. We do not have it yet, but that's yet to come. That's something that God has for us. So Jesus told the woman at the well again that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's amazing how many people have come to this earth, born into this earth and say, I am God and have called themselves God. Well, God is a spirit. He can't be touched with your hand. I'm sure there must be some kind of image of him because throughout the word of God, people have seen his image. Moses saw his backside when God came by him. The Bible talks about that God has hair and that God has hands and feet and these different types of things. So again, God sits on a throne but he is not a man, he is a spirit. And uh, when we get to heaven, we'll probably see some kind of likeness behind a, a veil or something about him, but he is not a human being. So angels can come as human beings. That's the second member of the Godhead, Christ came as a human being and uh, indwelt a human body, and therefore he became our redeemer. He's the mediator for us. So again, the doctrine of spirit is taught in the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus, speaking of his own body, told his disciples to handle it and feel it because a spirit does not have flesh and bones. He says, you just see me have. In fact, what's interesting, the, the resurrection body of Jesus still has the marks in it that came when Jesus Christ was crucified. 
and that when Jesus Christ was beaten and when he arose from the dead, he still had those marks in him. And that's why Jesus appeared in the upper room and came to his disciples and said, here, handle me, touch me, feel me. He said, because the spirit does not have flesh and bone as I do. He said, in fact, even put your finger into the piercings in my hand and touch me and see and put your hand into the hole in the side of me where they thrust a spear in. So Jesus still has those. I think this is unique in that when we get to heaven, we'll have no marks like that. I mean, if we had a leg missing, it's restored, hands, feet, whatever that, uh, you know, has been taken from us or else if we were born with some deformity, it'll be uh, just fine in heaven in our resurrection body. Only one resurrection body in heaven will still have marks in it. And that is Jesus and he'll have them forever and for all of eternity. The reason why for all of eternity, we will look and see what it costs God and what it costs Jesus Christ to redeem us and how he had to go to the cross. Jesus Christ became a sacrifice for us. In being a sacrifice for us, he paid the ransom price of a slave because we were literally in this earth as slaves coming from the chief slave, which was Adam. And when he sinned, he walked into the slave market. The door was closed behind him. Everybody born from him are born in the slave market. So we're all born slaves. And only one person came on the outside to redeem mankind. And that was Jesus Christ through the virgin birth because he was virgin born and did not come through a human being as far as his seed was concerned. The seed came from God, impregnated a woman. She gave birth to a child that was born outside the slave market. He remained outside the slave market as Adam and Eve should have done, but Adam and Eve listened to Satan, walked into the slave market, the door was closed, and Jesus Christ was born on the outside and for 33 years was tempted by Satan to give up, but he did not tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. And Jesus Christ literally took upon himself our sin, went to the cross, and since he stood on the outside, opened up the door. And that's the good news today. You and I can walk out. The message of the gospel is not that you need to do anything. Jesus Christ did everything. He threw the door wide open and the invitation is now just walk out. Believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you will be saved. You know, I'm gonna stop right here for this first half but just simply ask you a question. Have you received Jesus? Are you following after man-made creeds and things like this, hoping you can get to heaven? Are you hoping that your good works will get you in? Well, the answer is they can't because we're not saved by good works. And if good works could save you, why did Jesus have to come? Because no one could redeem you except Jesus. He's the only means of salvation. Open up your heart, receive him as your Lord and Savior. Today, you can receive eternal life. By receiving eternal life, you can now become a child of God and you can be recreated in your spirit and be just like Jesus Christ himself waiting one day for a resurrection body. And you even become his ambassador, his representative in life when you receive Jesus as your Savior. I will see you right after the break. Do you find yourself struggling, wanting to do what is right, but repeatedly failing? Have you lost your patience over and over again though you vowed not to? Have you found yourself caught up in promiscuity, knowing it's wrong, but feeling like you can't overcome the flesh? Are you constantly battling over the desire to live by the Spirit, but instead find yourself living by the flesh? In this powerful three-lesson series, Bob Yandian focuses on the conflict that exists between the flesh and the recreated spirit of every child of God. As you learn about what it means to live and walk by the Spirit, you will be equipped with the tools necessary to live a life free of the flesh. To order Flesh vs. Spirit, visit our website at bobbyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines of the Christian faith are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website 
at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Let's talk about what happened to Adam and Eve when they sinned. The moment they sinned, they were still part God, but they were still part human. They were part dust. And whenever we get born again, the part of us that that is us created on the inside, even though it is spiritually dead, receives the life of God in it, and we become part God, and we become part dust. And so by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when Adam and Eve sinned, they immediately lost the image of God in them. They became, again, spiritually dead on the inside, but the nature of the flesh also came into them. And this is sin in the singular. We're told in chapter 5 of Romans that as by one man, sin entered into the world singular, that's into their flesh, and then and then death by sin. And because that sin entered into them, through that, that became the doorway for Satan to come in, and they died spiritually the moment they partook of the fruit. So they died spiritually, and the nature of the flesh moved into them, and their body, made of dust, entered into the curse with all of the dust of the ground which again infected trees, infected plants, infected animals, and animals turned on each other, thorns and thistles began to grow, poisonous things began to grow in this earth, and that will not be remedied until the day that Jesus Christ comes back and he will remove that curse that's on the earth. When he removes the curse that is on the earth, the Bible says even the trees will clap their hands. At the coming of the king, the oceans will clap their hands at the coming of the king. And Romans chapter 8, it says that all nature will break forth into the same glorious liberty as the children of God. The children of God will be coming back from heaven on that day when the end of the tribulation occurs and Jesus Christ comes to rule on this earth. And when he does, those coming from heaven will be redeemed. And on that day, Jesus will remove the curse that's on this earth and all of nature will break forth into the same glorious liberty as the children of God. I like to think that coming back from heaven with Jesus will be singing, he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because that's what will be written on him. On his thigh will be written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He will, We will be singing that coming from heaven, but also the earth will be singing it back and we will form an antiphonal on two sides of Jesus Christ, behind him and in front of him, and all of creation and all of the church coming back with Jesus will be singing King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he will reign for a thousand years on this earth and then after that for eternity. So in other words, I'm simply telling you, you've got a good future if you've accepted Jesus. And if you accepted him during the break, welcome to eternal life. Welcome to this family of God that you are in. Let's talk about when Adam and Eve sinned. They immediately lost the image of God inside of them, but it has been replaced, that image inside of them to where their spirits, which lost that life, has been regained in us. And we now again have the image of God in us through the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve were both created in God's image and made in God's likeness. Their spirit was created. God just spoke it into existence, but their bodies were made out of the dust of the ground. We find in the case of Adam that God just took dirt and began to make it and all that, that he breathed into him the breath of life. And when he breathed into him, that spirit of God went into him and that was able to be passed on to others. In Genesis chapter five, their children were born in Adam's image, spiritually dead, but their children were made in Adam's likeness, which means they were physically alive, but they were literally had the nature of the flesh or that curse in them. We are born in that condition. We're born spiritually dead, but we're also born with the nature of the flesh in us that's infected everything made out of dust because your body is still dust. You are at the moment of the new birth, part God on the inside and still dust on the outside. Since Adam and Eve had fallen, taken on sin of all mankind and death, they now produce children born with the nature of sin and born spiritually dead. This is the curse that's on mankind and no one could redeem us because no one was perfect. It took a perfect person to hang on the cross for us and die for us to take our sins. And that was Jesus Christ, the only one since Adam born into this earth 
Adam was created in this earth. Jesus was born in this earth. Adam was created in perfection. Eve was created in perfection. Jesus Christ was born in perfection. Adam and Eve failed. Jesus Christ succeeded. And for the 33 years he walked here, he was tempted in all points as we are, but he never sinned at all, went to the cross, and the just died for the unjust. The righteous died for those that are cursed. And on the cross, Jesus took our sin, and no one else could do it. Mohammed couldn't do it. Buddha could not do it. No one could do it. Joseph Smith could not do it. No one can do it except for Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the only redeemer between God and man, the only mediator between God and man that can unite the two impossibilities. Why can he grab hold of God? Because he is God. Why can he grab hold of man? Because he is man. And only he can unite the two impossibilities. It's through Jesus Christ that I am born again. And it's through Jesus Christ that God can pass on life to me, information to me, guidance to me, because I am joined to him by a mediator and no one else forms a mediator. So no wonder Jesus Christ could boldly and confidently say, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no man comes to the father, but by me. And Peter could say in the book of Acts, there is no, there's salvation in no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved and through the name of Jesus Christ. So our body is made out of earth. And since the earth received the curse, all things made from the earth, from the dust are also cursed. Until we receive a resurrection body, we will be in this cursed body while on earth and without a body when we get to heaven, waiting on our new body, a resurrection body. In heaven, those who have died and gone there, who have been redeemed, accepted Jesus Christ, Old Testament, New Testament, but do not have a body yet. Only one person in heaven has a body. That's Jesus Christ. They're waiting for a new body. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, if we were to go into heaven right now, we would see the spirits of just men made perfect because they're only there in spirit form. One day they will have a covering over that spiritual uh, being and that will be a resurrection body. They'll receive that at the uh, resurrection of the church. That's the time when Jesus comes. We call it the rapture. But when Jesus comes back for us, the first thing that happens is the dead in Christ, those who've received Jesus as Lord and Savior, and they'll be in heaven, will come back with him and they will receive a resurrection body. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and our physic, our physical body will suddenly change into a resurrection body. And then all of us, those who have died and gone on before and we who are alive on the earth at the time will all have a resurrection body just like that of the Lord Jesus Christ and we will go to heaven to be with him. Colossians chapter two, verses nine and 10 says this, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Notice I still have the old man, but I'm to put him off. What this word put off means is much like changing clothes. Okay, I got up this morning and you know, and then I put on a shirt and pants and all that, but when I came here to the, to the studio, I put on a different shirt. And so I put on this shirt and it's just, I took one off and put one on. God says in essence, that that's what it is like to walk in the spirit. You have a shirt that's called, you know, your physical old man, and you have one that's called the new man. And what God says is each day you are to put off the old man. And the, the analogy here in this verse of scripture is like clothing. You put off the old man with his deeds, and then you put on the new man. It's simply a decision. Remember, again, I said on the front of the offering that we have, we have this arm wrestling match going on. I can tell you this, it's, the, it's a useless arm wrestling match because the spirit is far greater. Uh, the, Jesus Christ conquered spirit spoil principalities and powers in his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And at that resurrection, he conquered, spoiled, openly displayed principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. If there was an arm wrestling match, this is what it looked like. Boom. And God won hands down. Satan threw everything at Jesus Christ, threw everything at God. And after three days and three nights, and boom, God won. Jesus Christ arose from the dead. And that's the way it still is. Your inward man is far gra greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world or he that is in your flesh. So it's really not so much of an arm wrestling match. And, which, and I've heard this before, whichever one you feed is the one that's, that's going to win. That's not true. The one that wins always is the spirit because the physical body is doomed. It's going to die one day. It doesn't have a future. And when you die physically on this earth, you'll never have a problem with the flesh again. And the next body you're going to receive, if it's, you know, 2000 years since the time you died and the rapture takes place or two weeks 
You're going to have a spiritual being only, and then you'll have a resurrection body given to you. And so you'll never have this physical body again after you die. And so it says again, that verse of scripture that we are to put off the old man like a shirt, put on the new one like a new shirt that's being renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. We still have the old man, but we have the power to put him off. What is that power? It's a decision. You choose to walk in the spirit. You choose not to walk in the flesh. You choose to follow after God. You choose not to follow after the temptations of Satan and the world around you. Temptations come from three areas, the world, That's the world system around us. We see it on TV, everything else around us, music, everything. There's this message coming at us all the time to turn from God and we can conquer every problem ourselves. That's just not true. The world, then the flesh, that's your own flesh. You can tempt within yourself to, to walk after the things of the world. And finally, the devil, God is never in the temptation business. He can tempt no one with evil. He can tempt you with good. He can offer good things to you. That's in the book of James. So it comes back to this. We still have the old man, but we have the power to put him off. And that comes to a decision. The power comes from our our soul. The soul hooked up to our spirit says, I'm going to follow after God. If we let our soul get hooked up to our flesh, we can turn from God. But God says, when the temptation comes, don't yield to it. The power comes on the inside of us from our recreated spirit to walk with God. But the power ultimately comes from the Holy Spirit who lives in our human spirit. But we simply have to make a choice. The new man is being renewed in knowledge every single day. Take a look with me in Ephesians chapter four. And here Paul says to us in verse 17 through 24, I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. The word Gentiles is the word for heathen. Gentile doesn't mean just a nationality of people. No, it means the heathen who have not received the Lord in the futility of their mind having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ indeed, if you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus and that you put off concerning your former conduct. Here it is again, the old man like a shirt which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit, the attitude of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true holiness and true righteousness. We have the power to put off the old nature and to put on the new nature again by simply choosing to do so. First Corinthians 130, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Every good thing we have came from Jesus and made real to us because we are in him and walking in the power of the spirit. One day our dust will be made new also at the rapture of the church. We will have a resurrection body just like Jesus. Great stuff. I'll see you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Visit bobyandian.com. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.